All right. Well, we are live. What's going on, Justin? Living the dream, as I always say. Right. Uh, that's pretty much my only response to people. Hey, how's it going? How's your day? I feel like it communicates both a good day and a bad day pretty yeah. well. <laughs> I did a thing. I don't know if I did it on the podcast or I did, uh, you know, one of my Dale stops from the Zen Garden or whatever, but that was one of my things one time was... Nobody ever says they're great or they're fantastic or they're good. Mm-hmm. Or it's always, eh, I'm okay or I'm all right or I've been better or, eh, so so. I mean, it's nobody's yeah. ever just good. They're always, yeah. I think they always want want you to ask them questions like, oh, "What's going on, Justin? What's wrong, man? Why is your bad? Why is your day so bad?" Right, and even if you say you're good in the wrong way, people take it as sarcasm because I feel like that's something we've definitely developed as a culture is heavy sarcasm for if you are in a bad mood I guess <laughs> so um yeah what are we doing we're drinking a beer mm-hmm. this isn't the official beer that we're going to drink today but this is a New Belgium Citradelic I've talked about it a million times it's Tangerine IPA I'm not going to talk about this one again but we are we did start pre-gaming while we were setting up the podcast here with a Citradelic thanks to my roommate Tommy yeah thanks to tommy then yeah uh i was telling brian before we started too that ipas were not really my thing but this one is good and if you've gone on about it in previous podcasts i'm sure just another endorsement is yeah. all you need <laughs> right i'll tag them in the uh, you know the show notes and shit like that and mm-hmm. also during the show you'll see me writing down some stuff just so i make sure we catch all the points and I get everything on there mm-hmm. that we want to talk about so we'll put in new belgium be the first beer such a dog. So who are you, Justin? Marcel, uh, right? Is that the last name? Justin Marcel. Yeah, I know. Uh, in the past couple ones, you're like, I know, I'm Marcel, Marcel, and <laughs> right. uh, I get that. You know, at least originally, and uh, Marcel in general. I know you asked me who I am, and I'm going into my name, so I guess that's a good place no, to start. That's fine. Give us your uh, birthplace and <laughs> yeah, your lineage, all that good stuff. Uh, well, I was born in Charleston, uh, South Carolina, down at Robert St. Francis Hospital, oh, downtown. That's where I was born. Um, yeah, that's that's a that's a big one for people who were born and raised around here, especially uh, anything I guess pre nineteen ninety nine when there were less hospitals. You know, right. uh, born there. Uh, my mom and like her whole lineage go way back in the Charleston area, uh, and my dad was a Navy brat, and he lived in California. Yeah. Uh, Born in '60, so in the in the swing of it in the '70s until he finally got in the military and started traveling a little bit. Uh, but Marcel is pretty much what I've gone by since uh, college. That name instead of being called Justin. Right. Is that just the military thing? Well, kind of? and I didn't want that to happen to me because my dad was in the military. His brother was in the Marines. Uh, you know, my cousin went in the military, my older cousin, my brother was an RTC. So everyone, you know, wanted to be as military as they could be in high school. Yeah. And so they all went by that. And I swore I was never going to be like that. I'm Justin. Yeah. And then I go to college and my freshman roommate that I'm assigned with is named Justin. His last name was Smith. And we lived in the same room. We hung out all the time together. Uh, we, we, Joined the same fraternity, went to all the same parties, and Justin, Justin who, just turned into Marcel, and right. people just skipped it all the way. Because Smith's is not helping anyone <laughs> decipher anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it works. Yeah, I was Dale's my entire life, obviously. Well, not my entire life, but Since once military. I joined the military, yeah, I was Dale's or Daly or Dale or mm-hmm. some variation of that. Um, right. So it was nice to kind of get back to being Brian. Or I was master sergeant or sergeant or whatever, so it was good to right. get back to my my first name. But it took a long time. Yeah, I thought I would kind of miss it too. The the Marcel, and, and at times I do. But whenever I go back to the Charlotte area, I went to Winthrop up in Rock Hill. Whenever I go up there, I get Marcel all the time. Or friends who are moving from there to Charleston because I I endorse Charleston pretty much every town I go to. Yeah. I'm like, hey, Greenville's great, Spartanburg's great, Columbia, you know, it's Columbia, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I tell my friends you should move to Charleston it's great and if you don't want to be in the big city you don't have to there's Somerville there's Goose Creek there's Monk's Corner it's pretty far out there but yeah. if you dig a more country vibe 
you that you can have it here. Yeah, for sure. So where'd you go to school? Did you say that college? I went to Winthrop University. Winthrop. Yep, and I went to Stratford High School around here. So all your Somerville listeners are gonna be like, "All right, let's turn this shit off, dude. This guy doesn't know anything." I thought Winthrop was an all girl college. Is that not? It used to be an all girl college, and okay. uh, much to my initial delight, going there, <laughs> right. it seemed to be pretty close to that. Uh, yeah, I think when I when I went, it was like seventy five percent women, right. or something like that. It's not that it's big. Kind of like College of Charleston, really. I mean, it's mm-hmm. pretty pretty high. Yeah, female to male rate. Yeah, and it was it's good. It's and I think that is not necessarily because of its past, but the number one degrees going out of there are <clears throat> education and and arts degrees, the various arts, you right. know. So typically, those careers. Historically and today, cater not cater more towards women, but women seem to enjoy that nurturing vibe for the most part. Right. Um, in general, of course, I'm not saying every woman anything, or you know, don't want to be that guy. Right. Did Did you graduate? I did. I did. I graduated in five years, which. Uh, That's the plan my son's on right now, my younger son. It's it's pretty much the average nowadays, yeah. I would say. Just, you know, being recently out of college, just two years ago. My parents didn't understand that uh, initially, despite neither of them having finished college. Uh, but, you know, you hear that four-year degree, and when, you know, they have to pay or I have to get extra loans out for a fifth year, yeah, it's easy to get upset. Uh, but you know, I, I withdrew from like two classes total and I think I, I might've failed one. I don't remember. Or I didn't get a high enough grade in it because it was required for my major. You have to have a C plus. I got a C minus, so I had to retake it, but. Really? C minus doesn't get you anything anymore? Mm -mm. Well, it was my capstone class and the capstone class is like your final class, the hardest one in your major. And. That's kind of to put all your experiences together and say, I'm worth a degree. Like, you taught me enough to where I deserve it in finality, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was hard. It was a tough class. <laughs> and what you what was your degree in? Theater performance was my degree. Uh, I also had an outdoor leadership tacking on to that. So uh, I've been going to summer camps for a long time and then... Eventually started working one as a lifeguard, then as a counselor, then as a coordinator. And so I wanted to get that as part of my degree, too. Uh, so that was my minor out there. And it's fun. I As soon as I got out of college, I started working with kids at a uh, gymnastics place. But I ran the after-school side, not the gymnastics side. Uh, anywhere from 180 to 220 kids. And I was in charge of staff of, like, anywhere from, depending on how many kids we had that week or whatever, uh, 16 to 22 staff. Hmm. But it wasn't exactly for me in that environment. No. Cause I, but the summer camp stuff, did you do, like, did you were you in charge of, like, the talent contest and things like that? Or did you put on some theater type things and use that degree? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, there was a summer camp uh, right near Winthrop that was called uh, Bethel Woods. And they had a specific... So you have, like, your standard camp one week. You have adventure camp. And we had one called Mad Camp, M-A-D-D. And it was music, art, dance, and drama. Okay. And so... Uh, for one thing, at those typical summer camps, uh, you know, where you spend the night for seven days and your parents drop you off, you typically have younger people as your counselors, usually in college. Mm. And so me and whoever other, whatever other counselors maybe majored in dance or majored in art or music would kind of take those kids and train them for a whole week in a little crash course. And then on the last day, before the official um, closing ceremony, we'd have a pre-closing ceremony with all those kids from that camp putting on a show. Okay. You know, some people, whatever the kids were comfortable with, obviously, if they were more comfortable in drawing or dancing or 
putting on a short skit. Uh, and that kind of brought, obviously, my two passions together. You know what I mean? The outdoor leadership and the sure. um, theater. So Yeah, best case scenario. Mm-hmm. And do you still use it at all now? <laughs> not, not particularly in the way that uh, you know you're thinking. I don't, I don't go out and I have an audition for anything. I, I should, you know. Right. Some, you're not involved some, with the James Dean Theater or any of that kind of stuff. Somerville or Dock Street or any of that. I just, I haven't done that, and I should. And I tell my girlfriend to do that stuff all the time because she majored in music and she's like an incredible singer. Like she went to the national competition in Colorado in Colorado for like college women there's like yeah. 14 people who went um <clears throat> she hates when I brag about that too she's like I'm not that good she's her <laughs> she's her own most critical person you know yeah we ought to get her up to sing this Thursday yeah we could uh, I've I've tried to get her up there too where I think we did one time at Homegrown mm-hmm. uh to sing with Clayton yeah and she got done and she was like the he was playing a different key and I was trying to I don't remember exactly what she said I was trying to play in the same key he was playing in but it was too low for me and it was too high for him And yeah. uh, but it wasn't Clayton's fault because we just pulled up some tabs and he was like I'll give it my best shot yeah. so it was kind of a thing that could have accidentally turned out amazing and then just accidentally turned out okay yeah. well okay is better than, than nothing right I mean at least you got up there mm-hmm. but um, you will get into homegrown and all that stuff eventually but um, a group of people that you came in with, um, well, the past two weeks, I guess, mm-hmm. from um, from where you work, and we'll get into all that, right? Not being cryptic or anything, but right, right. They were like, like half of them were teachers, right? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. So, how, how did you? Are these all your friends, or these were just people that patroned and, and came into the to the trivia? So, a mixture of both. When I initially decided to start the trivia. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure which of my high school friends were still here or which of my college friends had moved here or, you know, any mixture of that. So I literally person by person went through my page and said, who still looks like they're in this area, whether it based off currently lives in or currently works at, and then invited all them, you know, individually. And then I created the page, created the event. And, you know, got some sparked interest, especially from some people that I hadn't talked to in a few years. You know, like, hey, you're back in town. Trivia sounds fun. Uh, my theater teacher from high school showed up. Like, yeah. <laughs> never would have expected that. And you said you went to Stratford? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, but the, that specific group of teachers, uh, Sean is one of them, and he works at Ashley Ridge, so he brought some of his teacher friends as well just to make his team bigger and better you know because typically the more brains i mean i got some questions here that we'll get into later but i try to spread out both categories wise and time period wise you know i don't want it to feel like oh this is all about current pop culture or these questions are impassably hard because i wasn't alive in the 40s you know what i mean so i try to find a good mix between all that uh, when i come up with my stuff so more brains across various ages is going to give you the best chance of winning. Okay. Well, I guess since I brought us into this to, to this part of the topic, explain mm-hmm. what we're talking about here. What are we talking about? So it's uh, Wise Guys Trivia is the name I came up with uh, for this. Pretty clever. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I looked at I, I, I went through a, a couple things before that, and I, I ran a couple of them by Hannah. They were Let's hear those. questionable. I th- Smart ass trivia is what I was originally thinking. Okay. You know, and then I was like, I don't, maybe I don't want a cuss word in my actual name of my company. Yeah, I don't think Groucho is going to want that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, s- smart Alec trivia. And then I was thinking, like, what is what is that what I'm talking about? Like, I don't want it to be like genius trivia or, you know, something pretentious, but something kind of funny, lighthearted, uh, and maybe something. You know, you could poke fun at the other teams with, like calling me a wise guy, calling another team a bunch of wise guys, and it could mean positive or like you could be losing, you could be winning, right? Uh, and that that was just kind of how I landed on that. And 
you know, I was, I initially was talking about smart ass trivia, and Hannah immediately shut it down. She was like, "No, that is a terrible idea." No, which one? Smart ass trivia. Oh, smart, smart yeah, trivia. yeah. <laughs> but uh, so that is the name of the trivia. It's hosted at Groucho's <coughs> Deli, uh, but they're Summer. they're yeah in the one in Somerville. It's purely a venue. Uh, they I you know, found out. 115 North Main Street, correct? 118. 118. 118. Yeah, 118 the other 115 is your place, no, right? 117 South, South Main Street is mine. Yeah, so yours yeah. is 118 North. We just confused it, the hell out of everybody, but yeah. just get on Main Street. You'll find it. Mm-hmm. Let's put it that way. I think, I haven't looked this up, but just from watching you look it up last week, if I'm remembering correctly, I think the railroad tracks is what separates the North and South. Might be, yeah. Yeah, I didn't do any further research. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was weird. We were like right down the road and yeah. well, the, north and south. That's the deduction I made, but I could be completely wrong. Yeah. So. No, it makes sense. Yeah. That's a good de- de- delineation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's uh, you know, it starts around 7, seven seven fifteen at the Grouchos in Somerville. Oh, wait a minute. What did you say? 7, 7, 15? Yes. And then it goes to eight thirty, right? About eight thirty, yeah. Sometimes, right. sometimes we get out of there closer to eight forty-five. I mean, you know, we usually show up to your spot around eight fifty or so. But that's people finishing their last beer, paying their bills, tipping the waitresses, going around, kind of mingling a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I try to, uh, I guess, sheepdog everybody out of there because Groucho's closes at nine. I don't want them staying. No, they do close at nine. I don't want you know them staying too too late cleaning up after us, but. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, you know sometimes it just happens when everybody's having fun. So, right. but with homegrown being open later, it's a it's a no brainer, especially with the three dollar <clears throat> three dollar draft beers, posted the two dollar bottles. Yeah, for sure. So you, two dollar bottles at Groucho's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's two dollar bottles for all your basic. Uh, kind yeah, what do you have down there? Kind of. Know. Yeah. What's the beer selection down there? Like? So we have your basic stuff: Mick Ultra, Coors Light, Miller Light, Budweiser, Bud Light. Um, Corona, that that sort of stuff, Standard. and that that's your two dollar kind of selection. But we have local beers as well. Uh, the canned washout wheat from Holy City. We have the canned Pluff One Porter from Holy City. Uh, the canned Tides frothy beard. The jalapeno ale frothy beard. Yeah. Um, Lagunitas we have, and there's always one I forget. We have the Elysian Space Dust IPA there. Um, None of them are on draft, right? These are all can of bottles. These are all can, can of bottles. Uh, the only beer we have on draft is we because there's only a one small kegerator uh, is an Oak Road beer. It's the uh, yeah. no, it's the Yagen Jogging Board. Jogging Board, yeah, that's the one we have, and that one that one's gonna be out soon. So I mean, maybe even by Thursday that'll be gone. So yeah. It'll be something yeah, that's, else. That's probably the most popular beer. Yeah, that they sell. Yeah. And it's a nice light beer for the light 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 beer drinking crowd. Yeah, and you know, not too too many people really except on Thursday nights during trivia come to Groucho's to to drink. Right. You know, they come there for some food and maybe a beer. Yeah, but and how long is how long has this location been open? I know Perfectly Frank used to be in there, right? Mm-hmm. So this has what been a year, maybe? It's less. Than a it year? it was a year. I think December eighth. If I'm right, and I haven't been there since then, you know, I haven't been here the, the whole time. I moved back to the area in July. Okay. So definitely wasn't here when I left, and when I came back it was. But I, I believe it was a year on December 8th, because they were open for the Christmas parade last year. Okay. So. That sounds about right. Early December. I didn't really even know about them. I mean, I knew about them. I guess I'd driven by because I used to work at Coastal Coffee, mm-hmm. and then I worked at Oak Road. So I know Oak Road had some menus over there you could order and go pick up some Groucho's, bring it back over there. So yeah, um, and I started over there this past February. So I guess it was a couple months after y'all had opened. I guess. So. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised. Does Oak Road serve food? They don't serve their own food. They always have uh, food trucks come in. Or the kitchen over at Coastal Coffee does food for them on Wednesday and Thursday nights, I think. So. Okay. Yeah. At least that's the way it was when I was over there. I was about to say, if they're letting Groucho's, people come in with Groucho's boxes, like I, uh, I assume they don't serve food. Yeah. You yeah. can bring whatever you want. You know, They, they have uh, some pizza menus in there. They got food trucks that show up. Like I said, people at uh, mm-hmm. the kitchen at Coastal Coffee opens up a couple nights a week. 
So yeah, you bring in whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very cool. But you guys still don't deliver, right? Or- so we have. A, I know you do a catering thing. We we deliver catering, so, so bigger orders, you know, eight plus people. Right, because I was always at work at Oak Road, and I was like, "Oh, this looks great. I'm going to order some Groucho's." And I called up, and they said, "No, we don't deliver." Yeah, what so they have to pick it up. What they have now is, it's not Uber Eats, but it's an app like Uber Eats. It's Grubhub. Okay. You can order through the Grubhub app, and then like a Grubhub driver will come pick it up okay. and drive it down the road <clears> for an extra. Yeah, five dollars plus a tip, right? Because I've never done the Uber Eats, but I see it all over the place now. It's been getting mm-hmm. pretty popular. Yeah, so it's five, like an extra five bucks. You know, and it's I don't know how much Groucho's is because I've never ordered from there, like yeah. Uber Eats or uh, Grubhub. But I know, like, if I was getting something from my house, some of them are two fifty delivery fee, and some of them are nine ninety nine delivery fee. Hmm. And so it might, it might be just who whoever picks up that order, how far away they are from mm-hmm. the order, maybe. It's either that or it's I maybe the restaurants have a say in it. Maybe uh, I know for like regular Uber, if there's not many drivers out, but a lot of requests, there's like a surcharge, yeah. and whoever's willing to pay it will get the Uber. You know, right? But yeah, I used to drive for Uber for a little while. Once I I quit my government job, and uh, mm-hmm. then the Uber Eats thing came out, and I was going to sign up for that, but then I. I got tired of Uber, so I just didn't even do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my brother did it for a little while. He said he made the bulk of his money, you know, 10 o'clock to 4 a.m., only in downtown area. Right. Yeah, it wasn't super lucrative, and I didn't want to put the, the work in to those types of hours. Yeah. I didn't want to deal with that crowd. I didn't want people throwing up in my vehicle and just getting rowdy and stuff, so I tried to stick to the daytime hours, and it was okay. But once I saw all the parts of the low country that I had never seen before, even growing up here, yeah. I got bored with it. I'm like, okay, I've seen everything. I've right. I've talked to every uh, person that I can talk to from out of town to foreigners to locals to whatever, and yeah. it just got boring. It just was a There's, lot of window time and uh, a lot of time sitting there just waiting on a ping to, to get you. And right. I don't know. Maybe. I just wasn't willing to work the real lucrative hours, I guess. But Yeah, what I know up in charlotte that people just hang around the airports yeah and i mean making that drive 12 times a day no i don't think that sounds appealing at all no. you know <laughs> yeah. and that's the thing it just got monotonous which you know any job can get monotonous i guess but that was a little more monotonous than i wanted um and you never know what your traffic is going to be like you never know what the hazards the construction i mean there's always some kind of obstacle that's in your way so right i just i gave it up I gave it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when say. you when you go out driving uh, for fun, I know that's something I used to do a lot. Uh, it used to be actually one of the dates I'd commonly take people on. It's like a second or third date because, uh, you know, maybe you, know, you do dinner or something the first date, something easy, coffee, you know, something maybe a little shorter term to see if you guys really are vibing at all. Right, right. But uh, one of my favorite dates I used to go on was... You know, I'd pick up whoever it was. Hey, what do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Right? Because that's pretty much the answer 95% pretty of the much. time. Yeah, nobody wants to make that decision. Yeah. Uh, I would always be like, okay, well, let's uh, do. Let's let's go get lost is what I would call it. Let's go get lost. Let's hop in the car, stop sounds, at a gas station. kind of creepy, really. But. Well, you know, I, I, I put a little charm behind it. I, did, I didn't. Like hey, let's go find where nobody can find us. I didn't, yeah. I didn't creep them out or anything. Uh, right. uh, but I'd be like, let's let's jam out to some music in the car. You know, turn up the radio real loud. You know, we don't have to hear each other sing. Let's just have some good time together. Get some get some junk food or something. You know, like road trip food, and uh, you know, go drive around and turn on roads we've never turned on and follow them down, see where they go. Yeah. Uh, and then whenever we want to go home. Hop on the GPS and type in the address and flip it back around. Right. And that always, to me, was one of my favorite dates to take people on because the conversation would happen naturally and the music was there to break the silence. Mm -hmm. Um, You're passing by places you've never been before that are giving you conversation topics instead of trying to think of something at dinner or plan it ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It's good stuff. I might steal it if I'm ever single again. Yeah, you should. You yeah. should. Uh, should. And everybody that's watching. One of the reasons I got into Ubers because I love driving. I love road trips. You know, I drove yeah. 
when I left uh, Las Vegas and retired, I drove from Vegas all the way back here, um, almost coast to coast, but not right. quite. Um, and I still want to go coast to coast eventually, but yeah, I love being in the car, but being in the car in the same roads in the same areas with the same people just yeah got old real quickly. So yeah, that takes the time out of it. That's it's not it's not like driving up and down Main Street every day. Like right. it's definitely more interesting. And you bring up driving across country. Uh, that's something my dad's done, and a couple people I know have done, especially because he's from the coast of California. Mm-hmm. And my mom was the coast, the Charleston, you know. Right. And so they've done that trip a couple times. And I've definitely always been interested in doing that, you know. It was fantastic. I mean, I, I did it way too quickly because I was, uh, I tell the story all the time. I told it tonight, as a matter of fact, to um, Paul Stone up there at, at Homegrown before I left work tonight. But um, I was in a, I just made a, a final decision. I was living with my brother out there in Vegas. I'd already uh, gotten divorced. I'd already gotten, re- not gotten retired, I'd already <laughs> retired from the Air Force. Couldn't find any work out there. And I finally, I kept thinking about it, about coming back to the East Coast. And one day I just picked up and said, I'm driving back to the East Coast today. And I told mm-hmm. my brother, see you later. And yeah. my kids, I said, all right, I'll be back in town, you know, eventually, but I'm, I'm driving. And, um, 36 hours from then was, uh, well, not 36 hours, a few less hours, now 24 hours or so was uh, Mother's Day. So my plan was I'm driving to make sure that I make it back in time for Mother's Day to surprise my mother when I got home. And I got here about noon on that Sunday, on that Mother's Day, and walked in the house and surprised everybody. But but I drove 36 straight hours. I took a nap for one hour at a, uh, at a gas station about 5 a.m. in the morning because I just couldn't keep my eyes open anymore. Took, took a nap for about an hour, got back on the road, 36 hours straight. So I didn't really take time to see what I was driving through. So I really want to do it again where I take just a couple weeks and right. stop do out it, at different places. Do it in four hours at a time or six hours at a right. time. and Stop out, get out, see all the landmarks, all, mm-hmm. the, all the popular towns, breweries, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I think so it's, one day, I, both my kids are still out there. So one's in Arizona and one's in Nevada still. So I'm I'm going back that direction eventually in a car. Yeah, I just don't know when yet. I know. Uh, oh man, what was I going to say? I have only driven as far west as Tennessee myself. I've flown to California to visit family, right, right. you know, multiple times, but for someone who has a date specifically around driving a car. I haven't gone very far west. I've I've right. I've driven a car all the way up to Connecticut, which is about a twelve hour trip. Um my uh big brother in my fraternity lives up there and I've me and him are really close and I've went and visited his family a couple times and his grandma and his mom and just spent some time with some people who made one of my favorite people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah, definitely the mountains are something I didn't really even see much of my childhood at all. So like going to Tennessee a couple times in college for like renting out a mountain house, uh, I mean it's blowing my mind just how massive these things are. You know, because right. I went to New York, I'm like, man, look at these skyscrapers, and I mean there's nothing compared to the mountains. You know, Whew. yeah, it's big. Speaking of Tennessee, you can go up to Tennessee. And uh, visit Slayton Johnson, as a matter of fact. He does our music for the show, and uh, he runs a river rafting guide. Uh, or he's a river raft guide up there, so in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And um, fantastic. If you want to go up there and have a good time, hook up with that dude. I'll yeah. give you a card before you leave today. Yeah, and I've heard you talk about him. I think it was maybe the last one you were talking about it. Yeah, every now and then I throw him in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've done a couple of water ra- whitewater rafting stuff, too. Uh out in Pisgah National Forest, okay. like right on the border. Uh, and that was part of my outdoor leadership thing that we did in college. We'd take these trips and just go hike 14 miles, go whitewater raft. And it, wow. it was scuba diving even. But it's usually like on your spring break or, you know, before school starts during the summer, after school ends in the summer. Right. And it's, you know, extra money, of course, that you're paying the school because you get college credit for it, which is super cool. Yeah, very cool. But... Uh, those are some of my favorite memories from college is going on all these outdoor trips. Yeah. So I love sort of stuff like that. And if we yeah, get hook up with... Time to get back up there, yeah. Yeah. We're going to open another beer. Yes. And this is our... Empty, right? Yes, this is our uh, 
featured. So our official beer. Yeah, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, Oak Road has been real good to me, so I got an Oak Road beer tonight. Uh, used to work over there. Those guys have been on the podcast, episode something or another. Look it up. I'll post <laughs> it in the show notes. You can kind of take a look at those guys, uh, Ben and Brian, when they were on. Um, let me write them down here. Ben and Brian. Oak Road. This is the Swartz from Oak Road Brewing Company. It's a Swartz beer. What is a Schwartz beer, you say? Well, Schwartz beer is a, or black beer is what it's called, is a dark lager made in Germany. They tend to have an opaque, 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 opaque. Opaque, yeah. yeah. Black color with hints of chocolate or coffee flavors and are generally around 5% ABV. They are similar to stouts in that they are made from roasted malt, which gives them their dark color. So that's what a Schwartz beer is. Basically just a dark kind of lager. This one is 5.25% ABV. Comes in at 18 IBUs, so there's not going to be a whole lot of bitterness in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, has an average rating of 3.74. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't the Schwartz <clears throat> the uh, mythical force in Spaceballs? That yes. They're making fun of the force? Yep. That's exactly right. I was thinking maybe it would have something to do with that, but I guess it's a part of Germany. Most likely. All right. I'm pouring these into a Goat Patch Brewing Company glass that I picked up in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I went out to do a uh, Spartan race out there. I'll give you the one with less head on it. Okay, no worries. Thank you. And there's still a tad bit left in here, so we'll tap top these off here shortly the goat patch here all right cheers cheers sir cheers to uh trivia cheers to craft conversations hey thank you roasty mm-hmm. there's really no description in here too i don't know why oak road didn't uh doesn't load the description on their beers at least i don't see one well, and it's definitely, uh, you know, I've had some some pretty thick stouts, mm-hmm. and I know this said it was similar to a stout, not exactly a stout, right. but um, the consistency is more like a brown <clears throat> as far as kind of the more watery taste instead of like a real thick, yeah. kind of milky, like a Dew Claws peanut butter stout or something. Right. And I knew that was what you had told me that you kind of liked, right? You said mm-hmm. ambers and like browns. Ambers and browns, here. yeah. So I figured this would kind of fit the bill a little bit, so hopefully... I hit the mark with it. That was the only thing I could think of that we had on tap at the moment. So thank you, Homegrown Brew House at 117 South Main Street for yeah. providing the beer. Always good. And uh, I, I I said during this season, you know, I, I've typically done that. Uh, I don't know if I heard it from someone else or and adopted the idea or if I started doing it. But the colder it gets, the darker beer my palate seems to kind of morph into right you know when it's winter going into spring i'm thinking oh maybe a corona or uh uh pilsners and kind of those lighter beers and during the heat of summer i'm thinking more citrusy um heffenweizens or something like that excuse me yeah i think that's the way most people think i mean i don't think that's anything weird were you thinking it was weird well you know i i just don't know where it comes from you know i don't know if I, I mean, it's if, kind of an ingrained yeah. thing. I think it's a, a pop culture type thing, really. Yeah, but I've never, I've never really heard it spoken aloud. I think everyone has. I mean, everyone's. <clears throat> I've had people agree with me, and you said other people have said it. Obviously, outside of my presence, so I know it's not just me. Well, I mean, it doesn't even have to be people saying it. You can actually go to the breweries during during seasons, and you'll see the types of beers that they're brewing. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're conditioning you to think that way because that's the types of beers that they're brewing during those seasons. I think. Yeah, you know. So I guess maybe even like homegrown brew house right now. You know, we've probably twenty five to thirty five percent of our wall is all dark beers right now because of the season. You know, so yeah. even us, you know, we're ordering seasonally. I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess that is them conditioning us then because they probably got the idea from us buying it so much that we like it, and right. they're selling it so much that we like it. Right. And I don't know. Who probably started yeah, it first? Came first, the chicken or the egg? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, in that conditioning, 
for that sort of thought goes into far more than beer, I would assume. You know, just for just about everything in society. Yeah. I did a... Um, there was a class in college called HMXP, was the uh, shorthand version of it. Uh, Human Experience is the name of the class. Okay. And everyone had to take it. Like, everyone who went to the school had to take the class. And... We there was a piece that I did a project on because it was it was basically a bunch of short articles uh, that would be presented one, one different one every class re- in relation to the human experience either how we deal with each other how we deal with a higher power mm-hmm. how we deal with ourselves our families whatever it was just so kind of like a sociology type class mm-hmm. but it was it was discussion based it was debate based it was works. That we would talk about that didn't necessarily have a right answer, just a point they were trying to get across, and we would all talk about it. Right. And it was my proving that everybody has their own perspective on things. Mm -hmm. It was my favorite class because we would get in these conversations, these arguments, and when I say argument, I don't necessarily mean hostile. You know what I mean? And it was, it was cool to have those conversations without getting mad at each other because like mine specifically was on self-reliance ralph waldo emerson wrote a piece called self-reliance and i am an atheist or you know i I don't believe in god so i guess i'm an agnostic because i can't confidently say there is no god because how the fuck would i know um but somewhere in his piece and i'm not sure what his specific religious affiliation was but uh, he was talking about that conditioning about how just because your parents are Christian maybe that is why you're a Christian or just because your parents like amber beer maybe that's why you like amber beer so much and so the whole idea was the thing was to do you think the things you think because you actually came up with that or has someone conditioned you to rely on someone other than yourself yeah absolutely and i did a little experiment in that class because that was like the class i was leading and i said okay everybody divide up into your religion so i'll say if you're jewish go over here muslim over here christian over here anything else over here and it was just anything else and christians and the two or three people in the other corner you know said they were atheist or agnostic or something and then i went a step further and i said okay methodist catholics presbyterians russian orthodox greek orthodox whatever divide up by denomination Mm -hmm. and then i had okay everyone i read the little piece about you know relying on yourself and picked out a couple lines from that uh short little article he did and said okay so we're we're challenging what our parents have taught us so we're taking it to religion because i think that's going to generate the most conversation catholics raise your hand if your parents are catholic methodists raise your hand if your parents are methodists so not only the concept of christianity but even the denominations like every single person raised their hand Mm -hmm. And I was like, have you measured, or not measured, have you researched that perhaps even believing in God, that you're more of a Presbyterian than a Baptist? You know, maybe they spin things a little more towards your way. You know, we're at a liberal college and the Baptists seem to be a little more conservative. Have you looked into that? And it just started a whole great conversation for that next hour of class. Sure. And... People, despite talking about religion, weren't getting upset. They were saying their point and listening to other people. And it started a great dialogue without people getting angry. And typically, when you talk about religion or challenge it in a group of religious people or non-religious people, atheists do it too. They seem to get high and mighty on whatever their stance is. Yeah, everybody's going to get defensive. It's me against you, us Mm -hmm. against them. It's a good experiment, and it's funny because I was raised Episcopalian, but um, 
I decided on my own to go to be a Baptist. And of course, now I'm an atheist, agnostic, whatever. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I mean, just like you just said, I don't know. I'm not going to choose a side. A lot of people are like, well, what if you're wrong? You know, when that when your time comes and, right. and you didn't believe, I'm like, well, okay, well, then I have to face and you know, pay the piper, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, but I'm not going to believe in something that I just don't believe in that I I can't prove. I don't know. I'm getting off way on a different subject, but mm-hmm. but yeah, I wouldn't have been the one to raise my hand and said I'm the same, the same, because I wasn't. I I went to the Baptist because that's where all my friends went. So right, and that brings me up to another subject that. I listen to uh, I listen to Joe Rogan quite often. Obviously, you know he's a big part of why I do this podcast. But he had um, Jordan Peterson on here recently. I don't know if you mm-hmm. listened to him or not. I I know that was one of the first conversations I believe you and I had was talking about after you gave me your craft conversation card. I was like, are you based like kind of on a Joe Rogan vibe? And you're like, right. that's exactly what I'm going for. Right. <laughs> so I was listening to the Joe Rogan uh, Jordan, the latest Jordan Peterson, because Jordan mm-hmm. Peterson has been on there quite often. And um, they were having the same discussion, a similar discussion as far as where do you get your values from and, and why are you like you are? And really parents have, according to Jordan Peterson, and he's a psychologist and does a lot of stuff with this type of okay. conversation, but um, according to him, very little of what you are really comes from your parents. I mean, you spend more time around your friends. You spend more time around maybe their parents, you know, at sleepovers, whatever. You spend more time in a school setting or on a playground, and you really pick up more of who you are from other areas besides your parents. And a lot of times you're against what your parents want you to be or want you, want you to think or want you to do. So it's really more society that kind of molds you into who you are. Mm-hmm. Now, religion might be its own little niche that, that right. really comes from your parents. But it was interesting. If you haven't listened to that episode. I have not listened to that episode uh, it's, quite uh, yet. super deep. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it goes it, into a lot of that same subject that you're talking about. Okay. Well, I know just based off what you said about society shaping it and what I assume is on this other podcast, uh, if I want to throw in something original, even though I haven't seen the other one, uh, working with kids at that gymnastics place, the kids acted very different once their parents showed up. Yeah. You know, you could see kind of the most outgoing kid there, you know, maybe the tough guy or maybe the shy one completely opposite when their parents show up you'd have a kid who's been kind of quiet all day kind of hard to get out of his shell Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you have to do more one-on-one time or smaller groups to get him to break out a little bit as soon as their parents show up you know sure you have that love and affection and with kindergartners it makes sense but you know when you have that seventh or eighth grader kind of really break out uh, you got to think that family environment is the opposite of how they are in society which was kind of a point you were making which right. is strange that it works in the opposite way of turning someone shy into someone not shy. And I don't know. It's it's very strange because it seems to almost always be opposite in the kids. Yeah. Like o- like almost every time <clears throat> the kid will flip an opposite switch when the parent would walk in. Right. And I, yeah. Well, that's interesting. So you think Almost every time. Yeah. It's based off what I've seen. Right. I feel like, I don't know. I had this discussion with myself one time on a podcast. I can't mm-hmm. remember what episode it was, but I talked about this to myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wonder if it's just, you know, is it the real pushy parents that kind of get the kids turned off and they want to go somewhere else? Or is it, because I feel like, I feel like my kids, and I, you know, I'm biased, I guess, but I feel like mine kind of really did get molded into the way that my ex-wife and I wanted them to get molded. I feel like mm-hmm. they are definitely a shell of, of us, I mean, or a clone or whatever. They believe in the same things. They kind of act the same way. They've got interested in the same type of career paths and those type things. So, But we never pushed it on them, so I think that's maybe... The key, I, th- I is, think, is being pushy and saying you need to do this, or you will be a baseball player, or you are going to be the best uh, football player ever, or you're going to be great at math, or you're going to be a doctor, or whatever. We gave them choices and said, "Look, you know, I, I grew up uh, Episcopalian. Your mom grew up uh, Southern Baptist. There's all this other religion out there. You mm-hmm. go out there and find your 
your path. You right. go out there and do the research and, and look at everything and make your own decision. Don't let us make the decision for you. You know, this is this is your life. You got to live it. I'm, I'm not going to live. You're not going to live my life through you. You know what right. I'm saying? And Which I think is what a lot of parents do. They try and um, pick up all their shortcomings and, and try and let their kids carry on that baton or that torch or whatever. Yeah, I think there's a there's a line, and it's not definite, uh, where you take those formative years and you know where you are guiding them a bit stronger. You know what I mean? In their general rights and wrongs, good and bads, of whatever the parents believe. And... Uh, when you kind of hit that third grade mark, I'd say parents either tend to keep that train going or what it sounds like what you did, kind of take back off the throttle a little bit and maybe make those that tight guideline of right and wrong, good and evil a little wider. So they, you're still not letting them get too far in either direction, just right. as a loving parent, you yeah. know. But... I know, especially with the kids who are super outgoing in the society and then super shy when their parents came in, I feel like maybe those parents kept it on tighter at home. Yeah. So they're exploring and learning and curiosity, maybe getting hurt by it, but not detrimentally. They they were only able to do away from their parents. Mm-hmm. And it usually causes them to act out a little bit, you know? And it's not on them. You know, at a certain point, maybe when they're putting their hands on someone else, it becomes on them. Because yeah. uh, there has to be consequences for that. But r- running it too close to the chest, especially as they get older, is definitely going to tr- show that opposites that we were talking about around your parents. Yeah. <clears throat> and But I still think it exists in every kid a little bit. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, even if you think about how you act around your own parents, as you get older, you become almost more of yourself around your parents you know yeah. when you were 13 and cussing in front of your friends you didn't do that in front of your parents but yeah. by the time you're 21 i can say fuck in front of my mom right. and not feel crazy about it yeah uh but even today i'm not gonna get like super wasted in front of my mom you know what i mean but maybe when i'm 40 uh yeah i won't care you know right. who's who's to say about my future but you know, you kind of almost have to bleed in some of your more societal personality traits to your parents because you don't want to disappoint them. You know what I mean? Because maybe that isn't exactly how they raised you. Yeah. But even to take it back to society, you know, I mean, people tell me all the time, or not they tell me, but, you know, they talk about being a Christian or I'm Baptist or I'm Catholic or whatever, and I believe mm-hmm. in Jesus Christ. I believe in, and I'm like, that's just because of where you were born. I mean, you were born in a Christian society. If you were Chinese and you were born in China, cool. you might be a Buddhist or whatever. Yeah. Even though they're pretty heavy Christian over there now as well. You know, we've spread this Christian thing all over the world. But um, a lot of it's just based on your luck and where you were born. Yeah. As far as what you are, who you become, mm-hmm. or what you believe. Right. Yeah. Like, so are you wrong just because you were born in the wrong place? <laughs> well, and I don't, I don't, I don't think so. When so when we talk about this idea of I don't know for a fact God does or doesn't exist, but I tend to believe um, when I when I say atheist, I kind of there's like a little asterisk next to it, you know. Right. Uh, I don't. I, mean, I don't. I could be- change my mind. Right, and I don't believe in any of the the gods that the humans are selling. You know what I mean? Uh, there's something fundamentally wrong with the Greek gods. We know that shit doesn't make sense, right? Right. Like that old saying, I just believe in one less god than, right. than you do, or one more god than you do, or whatever. I don't know Yeah, what the saying is. But. but, you know, I just think if there is a god, he's bigger than anyone that with a human mind comprehend, if he did create the universe. And us pretending to understand him is, is almost arrogant. I feel like that would... Or trying trying to speak for him, trying to understand him, I would assume he'd be okay with he, she, it, whatever. Yeah. Um, curiosity. If if a god made us, he made us curious. So I don't think he'd be problematic with us speaking for him, but killing for him, if he's a good god, you know, right. probably bad. Putting words in his mouth. I don't know, you know, like this is something we can't even comprehend. Yeah. But if I was a god or fucking 
could even think about it. I wouldn't like what a lot of people on Earth would be doing in my name. Yeah. But we don't know. We don't know what kind of God this we person don't. could be. We or, don't. Or, or a girl or a gal or right. whatever. But, you know, we tend to, to make him out to be a he. Uh, this, you know. Which is societal again. Exactly. Because men have always ruled most societies yeah. throughout the history. And uh, still do today, although the Me Too movement has kind of turned things around a little bit. But Yeah. Uh, which is good. We need a balance. We need to come to, to more of a balance. And that's what life is all about, I think, is a balance, a yin and yang of everything. But mm, Without a doubt. I don't know, man. That's a man. That's a rough subject. It, it but, um, it's heavy. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't come up with enough tape or GoPros to literally get through the entire conversation because yeah. it's ongoing. Yeah. And every day's worth of tragedies or miracles brings in more fucking questions. Right. You know. So pretending to understand is something I try to do sometimes, but I definitely don't push it on people. You know, I definitely sound arrogant when I talk about it sometimes. If a Christian, like, really, really challenges me, sometimes I'll yeah. puff up a little bit, you know. But Right, yeah, just like you were saying, right, just uh, way earlier about uh, me versus you, us versus them. People people like to, to get bent out of shape on their side. Mm. And even people that aren't even in the conversation, you know, you and I are having a conversation in a bar, and this guy over here is starts hearing Republican or Democrat or religion or not religion and they their ears perk up and their face yeah. starts getting red and they start getting angry for no reason. They're not yeah. even part of the conversation. Yeah. So my son and I were just having a conversation about this the other day, my younger son, that we just we've kind of gotten to the point where we just don't even engage anymore. We're like, okay, you believe what you want to believe, I believe what I want to believe and let's just yeah. shake on it and let's have our beer and dinner mm. and just get over it, you know. Right. There's it's the wasting energy on on bickering about you know red versus blue or God versus no God or any of these things is just yeah. it's kind of a waste of time. Well, and that's that's what I was kind of talk hitting on earlier about the thing that I liked about that class is like the arguments were not out of anger, right? You know, and typically, I mean, when you start involving yeah, in this in the right setting, then yeah. it's, then this can be a cordial conversation. But yeah, uh, yeah, when you're out, like you said, you got some beer involved. Yeah, tensions get high. Strangers, you know, yeah. like people, people you're not exactly comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. But still, inter- interesting, interesting, nonetheless. Yeah, I like having those conversations, really. But me too. But I don't get bent out of shape about them anymore. It used to be, I got real heated about stuff. And and Toad, you know, held my line on things, and mm. I've kind of learned to to listen to what other people have to say because they might say something that changes your mind, well, or something that makes sense at least, or mm-hmm. something that uh, you can at least agree on. There's, there's should be middle ground, common ground in every conversation, I think, for the most part. Yeah, and even if it's even if it's broad strokes, like okay, you're not religious, I'm religious, let's be good to people. Right. Like, yeah, we if if, if that. that's the broadest stroke you can hit, it's not a bad stroke to hit. You know what I mean? It's yeah. if that is the two things that, you know, in an argument we say these are the only two ways we're similar, and that's the only thing. I think that's a win for the conversation. You know. True. Yep. Find so. common ground. That that could be a, the theme here. Without a doubt. Uh, do you want to take a brief pause? What's the pause for the cause? Smoke a smoke a smoke and smoke sure. a smoke a cigarette and yeah, we're about uh, fifty four minutes in already, man. It's flying by. It is flying by. You said it outside too that it would flies by, man. We'll hit the pause button. We'll be right back. Uh, YouTubers, Google players, whatever. Spotify people who can't yeah. see us. Spotify. <laughs> All, All right, right. you got it behind you. <laughs> and we're back. All right. So, yeah, we just had, uh, Lay was eating uh, Justin's shoes out there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, I apologize. Don't sue me or anything for, for shoes. I'll buy you some inserts. Yeah. Probably be better than the ones that were in there. They were looking <laughs> It's uh, probably better than the original yeah. inserts. Yeah. So, it might be a good thing. Might be a well-needed upgrade for some inserts. Yeah. And we were talking about how uh, Lay is a sweet dog. I mean, I met her tonight, obviously, but... We were 
putting the temptation in front of her face. It's definitely not on the dog because they're going off base or instincts, you know. Right. People go up and they, they yell at him, they chastise him, they spank him, and they do whatever they do to a freaking dog. The dog's a dog. The dog is doing what a dog is supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> you, we left the shoes out there. I did. I should have known better. But we leave those things out and mm-hmm. can't blame the dog. Right. Really. I mean, I guess to an extent eventually you th- you think that the dog has to learn so i mean i guess there's some point where the dog is maybe is too plain but yeah well maybe. i don't know from the little bit of dog training stuff i've heard people say you know <clears throat> i don't know if there's research to back it up but i i think so you know uh when you invoke like a punishment on a dog like putting them in their crate or maybe smacking them on the butt you know it has to be Within it has to be like while they're doing it. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean. Because if you if they shit in the house and you get home from work six hours later and you come in beating them up, yeah, they're confused. Because I mean, there's not a direct correlation in their brain to what happened at some point during the day. Yeah, and when you arrive home, because they they think, oh, my owner's home. I love my owner, and then you start hitting them. Yeah. They think the negative activity is greeting you at the door right. at that point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. They they don't correlate to the right thing. Um, but I th- I still think they know. I mean, once you take them over to that spot and say, "Did you do this?" They know what they did. Yeah. It, now it comes back to them. I think. Right. I think. I don't know. I'm not a dog. Well, she looked a little remorseful when I picked up the shoe, and she yeah. kind of hid behind her roommate and was like looking at yeah, me all knew. sad. You yeah, know, she knew what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, she knows she's going to get beat later. (laughs) She's not going to get beat at all. She gets too much love. Maybe that's the problem. Too much love. Can you have too much love? Um, Probably. I think so. I mean, is chafing involved? Probably, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe when obsession comes into it or unrequited, you know, that that could definitely cause some problems. Yeah. <clears throat> We're still drinking the Swartz, by the way. We haven't got anything different. We just topped off these glasses. Yeah. With Pure, the Swartz. The, the, um, what do they call them in movies? When, like, glasses are different uh, f- fills throughout the same scene, you know? Right. Is there a name for it? Yeah, it's... I just call it movie mistakes, but... Yeah, it's... Or when the clock changes, you know, certain things right. you can catch. It's it's it's, it's an inconsistency, but there's like a name they specifically use for it. Come on, man, you went to film um, school. Yeah, I know. It's did they teach you that in film school? Uh, well, and we didn't really focus too too much on on film. I mean, we did you know some stuff obviously, but uh, man, that's gonna really bother me. The fact that I can't remember it right now. Yeah, it'll come to. But, I, mean, I could look it up. No, it'll come to me. We'll be having a conversation, and then I'll just say a random word, and we'll be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the spears is good. It's very good. And they do a good job. I mean, they're a German centric brewery over there. They do a lot of German styles, and I think they do them very well. You know, I'm going to be honest. When they first opened up, I hated Oak Ripper. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But now I'm one of their biggest proponents or proponents. Proponents. Yeah, that sounds Supporters, right. Supporters, I guess. I don't know. Um. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have worked there if I didn't enjoy their beer and, and like their beer. I wouldn't push anything that I don't that I don't like. So mm-hmm. they definitely got a lot better. But out the box, they weren't that great. Yeah, <laughs> they had some chemical uh, sanitation problems. Whatever, there was some off flavors in their beers, and yeah. they were a little thin and whatever. But now they've they've got it dialed in, I think, and they do very well for the niche that they that they do, which is German centric style beers. So right, picking a picking a niche is an easy way to get an audience. You know. Yeah. Picking a target audience. And I know uh, Legal Remedy Brewing Company up in Rock Hill, mm-hmm. when they first opened, they were a smash and like all their beers were great. Yeah. And I think over time, uh, maybe they've, you know, cut a corner here and bought a little bit cheaper of this or a little bit cheaper of that. Sure. And some of their more recent beers that have the same name, you know, just a new, a new batch or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, haven't been as good as those original batches we got. And that may just be me kind of honeymooning the experience for when they first open but i i I think i think it could be a lot of things right yeah i mean it could be there's been 
better stuff come out that's come out since then that you've tasted and now that doesn't taste as good as it used to because you've tasted better things because things right. evolved at other breweries or whatever different beers that you've drank or your own palate evolving as well yeah true but like you said they could be cutting some corners and realize whoa this is expensive to make this beer let's cut a corner here cut a corner there and right make it cheaper but continue to make it but i've had the same thing you know a lot of beers that we get on the wall at homegrown that I taste it. There's one on the wall right now, as a matter of fact, the um, the D9 German chocolate cake. I remember having that a couple of years ago. I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah. And um, now it just doesn't seem that phenomenal anymore. And I don't know if it's just because there's better stuff out now or it's because they've done something different with the batch. Well, and I've, I've heard D9 many times. And a few years ago, people were ranting and raving about D9. Yeah. And last time I saw them, they had a tent at a little beer slash music festival up in Charlotte. Uh, my buddy Brett put on. Uh, Brett and my friend Joe Campo put on just this reggae. It was called Jamaican Me Hoppy, H O P P Y. Yeah, and nice. it had Jamaican reggae music and hop, hop, hoppy for the beer, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it was a great time out there, but that's, that's the last time I've seen D9 kind of really advertise anywhere yeah you know i know most most bars i go to don't really have them on tap uh not frequently anyway yeah and we haven't in the past because you know we used to be just uh south carolina beers and that was it so Mm -hmm. we just now started adventuring out and getting other stuff on tap from uh, other states but but yeah they've always been a big name since they first hit the scene you heard d9 all the time yeah so i don't know if i don't think they've gotten bad I think just so many breweries think, have popped up yeah. since they did. Right. And then a lot of times, or sometimes, not all the time, I don't think, but you know, people talk about the big box uh, beer conglomerates, InBev and those types of things, buying these smaller companies and then their beer kind of gets watered down and is kind of shitty. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, people talk about it all the time, so I don't know if that makes it true. I don't think I've really... I don't think I've really tasted that in, in the people that have sold out the Wicked Weeds or the Goose Islands or right. whoever. Pick a pick a pick a brewery that's sold out. Sold out, I guess. Yeah, you know. As far as Wicked business, as far as what I'm concerned, but yeah. I don't think they're any of those that I just mentioned. I don't think I've tasted a difference in their beers. But a lot of people say they have, and I don't know if they're just parroting what they've heard other people say, and it's not true because I don't I don't see a difference. The the group think and the hive mind kind of taking yeah. over. I personally, of the ones you have named, have not tasted a difference in w- any of Wicked Weeds products at all, and uh, that's a brewery. Every time I go to Asheville, I'm going to Wicked Weed. Right. At least one. And some people one won't of even the- go there anymore. I'm like, Come on, man! There's, there's still make yeah. good beer, but people just want to support the little guy, and they're not the little guy anymore. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, and then you support them so they get big, and you can enjoy more of their beer in more places. And then as soon as it happens, they sold out. Yeah. Which uh, now we're gonna leave you, yeah, yeah. and go nice friendship. Go to the done. go to the shittier brewery down the road that hasn't perfected their stuff yet, right? And make them big, you yeah. Know? And then they'll sell out, and then you got to find another guy, right? So it's kind of working backwards of what you think economy would do. Yeah, it seems like, hey, I've been been with you guys since day one. Congratulations, you made it big. You get a few million dollars from InBev. Yeah. You know, let me continue to drink your great beer that's now distributed even further than it used to be. But then a lot of people talk about, well, you know, InBev and all these other companies, I don't want to just pick on InBev, but they actually get a portion of a cooler, you know, at a grocery store and whatever. So they're pushing mm-hmm. other guys out of those coolers, the little guys out of those coolers because they're taking up and buying up all the little guys right and they're taking up more cooler space so i, I can see the arguments in some some instances but yeah i don't know but i'm if you, still gonna drink the beer i don't care if you want to have a permanent pernicious and you're trying to do it in california then you're going to be glad that you supported them all those years right. because yeah. <laughs> asheville and california about as far apart as you can get yeah for sure so i don't know speaking of beer you mentioned all the beer at um at Groucho's there, mm-hmm. do they do like buckets and stuff? I know you sell the domestic stuff with like two bucks a, yeah. a bottle. Can you get like a bucket? Yeah. Like you do at some restaurants? Buckets, um, you know, it evens out to $10 a bucket uh, and on. So on. And that's how many beers in a bucket? I've never bought a bucket. Five. 
So, okay. so you're not getting a deal. It's five. Well, it's two bucks. Well, beer's not always two dollars at Groucho's. You know, it's two dollars on Tuesdays, and it's two dollars while I'm doing trivia. Okay. And then on Fridays all day, it's ten dollar buckets. So, okay. It's it's a different special every day. You know, they have food specials on some days. They have alcohol specials on some days, but. I talked to Emery and really was just pushing him to make beer a part of trivia, you know, because at the one I did up in Rock Hill, um, it was $1 PBRs, but we were right across from the school. So we get a ton of Winthrop kids. And I mean, that's how I started going to trivia because I could spend a hundred pennies on a beer, draft PBR yeah. and have... 10 of them, you know, or whatever, but like 10 for the table, 12 for the table. And then if I'm winning a $5 gift card, that's five PBRs on one gift card. You know what I mean? For one, for winning one round out of the five of trivia. Yeah. And so if I got two or three people who are all relatively well-versed in a bunch of categories, I mean, we could, we could almost drink for free every week, you know, which was ideal when you're in college. Sure. So... I told him we got to have some sort of special, and you know we don't have draft PBR, but if we make these bottles two dollars, you know how like we do on Tuesday, not for the whole day, but just at least while I'm doing it, yeah. I can get a lot younger people out here who don't want to spend that five dollars <throat> on a beer, and then in addition, going and getting craft beer from Homegrown After for only one dollar more, but with much higher quality than a Miller Lite. Right. I mean, it was a no-brainer to bring the crowd over there, and it's walking distance from Brow Joe's. True. Yeah, and all you know, full disclosure. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't let you know this originally. And when I put the podcast out and said, you know, kick the keg on Thursday nights, the kick the keg actually ends at seven o'clock on Thursday nights. But oh. I've extended it for you guys. Okay. Um, just for your crowd, so nobody else yeah. is getting that three dollar deal except you guys when you come in there from. From the trivia from Groucho, so okay, and then the same thing. I've I've moved the music now, so mm-hmm. you know the first first night you guys came in, the guy was wrapping up music and packing his stuff up, and there was no. I mean, it's music. We're playing music over the yeah. uh, iHeart iHeart Radio or whatever. But um, I've asked all the uh, musicians on Thursday nights to play eight to ten now instead of seven to nine. So you right. guys hopefully get an hour of of music of live music. So yeah, and I know that first week we did walk in and he was packing up. Yeah. The guy looked fucking dumbfounded. He's like, he was eighteen yeah. people just walked in this restaurant. <laughs> yeah, and like I'm too far into packing up to unpack. Yeah. Oh man, he was not happy. But the guy we had last week. Uh, but you know that that night was already set up. The time was already set. So he was already I paid for those to hours as either. As far as you bringing people in, especially for the first week, you don't want to get. Right. You didn't want to get your hopes up, I'm sure, just as right. much, you know. Yeah. So after that first that first Thursday, I told the rest of the people, I said, okay, we're moving the time, 8 to 10, yeah. um, to accommodate this. So hopefully it helps you, mm-hmm. it helps me, it helps Homegrown, it helps the musician. I mean, mm-hmm. hopefully everybody's going to benefit from this from this thing. So Right. And I usually get paid the night up for trivia, so I always, or, you know, last week, since last week was the first week we had him stay a little later. Uh, yeah, I made sure I gave him a good tip, talked to him a little bit, because yeah. uh, he they don't have to do that. They don't have to stay that extra hour, an extra hour later, especially with other stuff they could be doing on a Thursday night, like uh, whatever that country bar is down in Latson. They have open yeah, mic nights on Thursdays, like till midnight or something like that. Right, yeah, Fleming Moore runs that over there, the open mic, and he's the guy that actually puts together the singer songwriter homegrown series on Thursday nights as well. So oh, okay. he's he's in both places. So Oh well it's good that he's involved with it, so at least he knows why his some of his acts are showing up an hour late, you right, know, right. or yeah. What he's used to being an hour late. Right. Yeah. So uh, this Thursday should be good. You know, this is third Thursday, so hopefully there's gonna be quite a few people in there oh, yeah. on top of you guys. Yeah, on top of you. Well, Maybe. we and we've generally been filling up uh, half the restaurant. People who are solely there for trivia and drinks, and you know everybody ends up grabbing some food while they're there. But I was going to ask that same question: if it was more just drinking, or if people were actually eating while they're there too for the trivia. It's it's, I'd say with the younger crowd, centralized more around drinking. But I mean, you need food to soak that up for your stomach, especially if you're 
planning on going out afterward or yeah. uh, I mean it is around dinner time too a little a little bit later of a dinner but uh, a lot of our teams show up maybe at you know 6:15 and eat first and then by the time trivia rolls around their trays are getting cleared off and they can start making some room for some beer and some we, we, have, right we, we have we have sheets and stuff so yeah. uh, there's only so much room on a table <laughs> right what's the most popular food item over there do you know off the top of your head Yes, uh, I think pretty much at every location, the most popular item is uh, what's called an STP dipper. STP yeah. dipper. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it originally stood, and I don't know if this is true, because there's like a thousand different rumors that I've heard mm-hmm. about why it's called that. But I think the one that sounds the most real is that it, real. it was originally a salami, turkey, and provolone sandwich that you dip. You know, and now it is not that it is roast beef, turkey, bacon bits, Swiss cheese. It's good. It's not my favorite sandwich there, but um, it's definitely the most popular one. Really? Yeah, I'm a big pastrami fan, so I can't even find it. I'm gonna stop stop looking here in a second. Nutritional information. (laughs) Yeah, they got allergy menus and. All sorts of nutritional menus there for. Fear. So I've only eaten there one time, and it was something I got to go and took it back to, to Oak Road when I was working there. But um, somebody, oh here we go, Big Dipper, OSTP oh, Dipper. Mm-hmm. Go. God damn it! Where the fuck did it go? <laughs> STP Dipper, extra special blend of roast beef, turkey, Swiss cheese, melt, and real bacon crumbs on a fat sub roll. Serve with your choice of Formula 45 or Danish Blue. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was getting to. The Formula 44, is that the most popular sauce? Sauce. Yeah, the 45 sauce. Or 45. Yeah, okay. is like their signature sauce that they've had since the 40s. I mean, it, they, okay. I think they opened 41, 41 1941. Saw, yeah. And the, the main guy who owned it, uh, Mark or Mark's Groucho, Groucho Marx, maybe. I I always get it confused because there's like a... Well, Groucho Marx was right that actor right back in the... Uh, yeah. Silent actor, whatever. Right. Yeah. And I, I always get the name confused because I flip between the two every time I talk about it. But he started it in Columbia. And there's another restaurant in Columbia called Andy's. And it's... They have like the same sandwiches, the same sauce, because they were partners originally, okay. and then he broke off and created his own. And so there's one called Andy's, and from people from Columbia, like my girlfriend's from Columbia, there's a feud between Groucho's and Andy's. Yeah. But I mean, I, I would, I think Groucho's wins because they're they're all throughout the state now. There's a couple in North Carolina, Georgia, and I think Andy's still just has the one location. But well, <clears throat> okay. But they, so, I mean, does it win just because it has more locations? I mean, maybe Andy's doing shit way better. I've never eaten one location. I've never eaten there, uh, and so it might be better, you know. But yeah. he's just killing it in one location. This, this right. guy is spread out all over the place, wasting money on different yeah. real estate. And uh, well, I don't think they started even spreading it till after he died. But yeah, um, you know the fact that Andy's kind of just took those recipes. That I don't know how many of them were created together, or like how many of them were just Groucho and Andy memorized it and you know put <laughs> put one more dash of salt in it so he could call it a new recipe. You know what I mean? Or yeah. and I'm making that shit up. I don't know if that's exactly what had happened, but yeah, sounds uh, legit. You know, I'm thinking, what would I do if I wanted to steal somebody's recipe? But uh, you know, I've never eaten there, so I, I couldn't say. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I want to eat it both actually. I side to, by I side, test it out. yeah, yeah. Did you ever see that movie that Michael Keaton did last year or two years ago about McDonald's or whatever? The hell was the name of that damn movie? I've seen the super size me movie about yeah. McDonald's, but yeah, I this, haven't. This was super. This was an actual legit, not like a documentary, but it was pretty much a story of how McDonald's came about, like a mockumentary sort of thing. Not even a mockumentary. What the hell was it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it does matter. I'm gonna look it up right now. Michael Keaton, because I think you'll be interested in it. <laughs> Michael Keaton. How do you spell his name? Keaton. There you go. K E A. Yeah. 
Uh, it's called Founder. Okay. It was was it released in theaters? I don't really go to the theaters very often. I'm telling the no, truth. I think I, I watched this on um, I think Netflix, but yeah, it was called Founder right there. Okay. Yeah, the story of how uh, McDonald's kind of came about. Mm-hmm. Just a fictionalized version of of what actually happened, you know, yeah. with some extra drama thrown in. I'm sure. Excellent movie. It's fantastic. Yeah, I do like a lot of movies. I like to consider myself a movie buff, but then, I, then again, everyone who does consider themselves a movie buff immediately gets tested. You know what I mean? Right. By whoever else. Right. And like right now, you just failed. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> the best movies of last year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it happens, and and that uh, is something I do sometimes. I guess I still got some questions in here I could ask uh, whoever. <clears throat> yeah, feel. we got to get to that eventually, right? Yeah. Uh, we got to open this other beer, this last beer, and we got to um, you brought mm-hmm. some questions. We're an hour and fifteen minutes in right now. Yeah, one well, I could do them now. I think that would be easy, right? And at the very least, you know, if we feel like one question is particularly interesting, we can just delve into that and. Right. This will be a first. I've never had uh, anybody ask me any questions. Well, I mean, you know, specific, not specific, right? thought out questions. I mean, we've definitely had questions on the show. But yeah. Well, and this will give viewers kind of it's a... It's not an interview show. It's a conversation so, show. But if this starts uh, some sort of conversation. Right. And that's, that's kind of what I'm going for here. I'm going to look and pick some of the interesting questions. I got here on my computer. I saved the questions from every single week just in case, you know, far in the future I want to pick one out and kind of give the people who've been loyal, you know, a freebie almost, you know, but you, you still have to remember it, you know, but, uh, hopefully I got a, I got an entertainment section here just talking about movies just now. Um, so, oh, let's do a music one first because you're big into music, right? I mean, I feel like I am. Yeah. I feel like you're going to stop me right off the bat. Well, and, and this is stuff. I, I try not to come up with questions that are impossibly hard to guess. You know what I mean? That's that's not making anyone feel good about themselves. The idea of trivia is you want to feel as if you're doing well, um, even if you're not winning. You know, like if you're if you literally miss all ten questions in a category, you'll be like, "I'm never fucking coming back here. This is terrible." Yeah. Um. So it's multiple choice, but I won't give you the options if you know it right away. What is the best-selling album of all time? Is it a Beatles album? Can I ask questions? (laughs) Uh, No, I got a Beatles question for you, too, though, if you want. Okay. Um, It is not a Beatles album. Hmm. Best-selling album of all time. Thriller, Michael Jackson. That's one of the three options. Thriller that's by Michael Jackson. It, it might be. Okay, so it's Thriller by Michael Jackson, Their Greatest Hits by The Eagles, or The Wall by Pink Floyd. Those are your three <clears> options. And you can I'm stick still, with. I'm still going Michael Jackson. Okay. Uh, for a long time it was, and Their Greatest Hits by The Eagles has slowly but surely like just kept getting sales and recently I think it was like 2017 broke through to number one wow. of all time even the, after Michael died huh? yeah well I think that might have bumped him back up for a little bit too you know what I mean because if I'm remembering correctly so Michael Thriller's number two The Wall is number six three was um yeah, I was thinking some sort of Beatles. Would be three, Beatles. three might have been the Beatles, the like the one where there was the, the, the white album. Or I think it was the white album was number three. Number four was Hotel California by the Eagles. They had like two of the top five, um, but yeah, that was interesting. And also I'm talking about the Beatles. <clears throat> so even if I got the the three choices, I wouldn't have even got that right. So. Yeah. Right. But it was good. I knew one of them without even knowing the selections. Right. right. Uh, which of the following is not an album by the Beatles? All right. A, Meet the Beatles. B, Help. Or C, All You Need Is Love. Which one is not an album? Oh, fuck. Give me those again. Meet the Beatles. Meet the Beatles. Help. All You Need Is Love. Which is not an album. Mm-hmm. All You Need Is Love? That's right. Okay. Yeah. 
single, but not an album. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, while we're yeah, let's we'll get pause real quick. Beer, let's yeah. open this beer, and then we can uh, do some more of this. Kind of fun. Uh, we're an hour and nineteen minutes in. We're going to open up um, a barrel aged ten fifty imperial stout, aged in bourbon barrels. This is the first beer Caleb and I drank on this podcast. As a matter of fact, the pilot episode. If you've ever watched it, maybe mm-hmm. you haven't. Um, the I, intro to what we were doing. This is the first beer we drank. Yeah, I think I've only watched the ones where it was either you solo or you with a guest. I haven't seen any of the ones with Caleb. Yeah. The, um, Mostly because, like you were saying, those those first episodes were super daunting with the two-and-a-half-hour time mark and three-hour time mark. Well, the pilot episode was, I think, 35 minutes or something like that. Just We were just explaining what we were going to do and oh, whatever. Okay. But, so it's, it's, it's worth a look. When I did the, um, the 50th episode... Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, I went back and watched the pilot episode and a bunch of other episodes just to kind of reminisce and mm. get some stuff to talk about for the 50th episode. And I thought the pilot was pretty fantastic going back and looking at it and um, how raw it was and how different it was. And Did y'all have the studio set up at that point? or? Yeah, we still had the table. Um, you know, not as many stickers or whatever. I don't think we had a monitor over here. Right. On air sticker or sign was somewhere else. It was downstairs actually, so my roommate would know that we were on air and, and not make a bunch of noise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, some different things. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we were in infancy, and, and even the the video we had like a border, a stupid ass border going around it, and some stupid things. I don't know. Yeah. It was not the best. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was good for what it was, but we really went way past that. And it was funny because sound kind of went up and down. Sometimes we got the sound out in right. Sometimes we didn't. Sometimes his mic sounded great. Mine didn't. The guest, maybe the mic wasn't even on. I don't know. We had all kind of issues. But right. But that pilot episode was fun to go back and look at to see where we started and what we were, and what our goals were and what you grew, grew where into. We to go. Yeah. yeah. And then um, we did a um, kind of a mid. A mid show that was a uh, what do we call it? The um, it was just like an update of where we had come from and where we were and now where we're going yeah. past that. So I need to probably do one of those myself to kind of recap and see. Anyway, it was a fun episode. We'll go back and yeah. watch fun episode. Yeah, it I was will. good. I will. And, and we drank this beer on it. That's why we're talking about it. So. <laughs> This is uh, aged through four seasons and from a blend of the top bourbons around. This 1050 has morphed into a monster of cranked up flavor. Uh, you got espresso, you got burnt sugar, you got rich chocolate, you got caramel notes. Caramel? Caramel. How do you say it? I say caramel. Caramel? Yeah. Um, you say caramel? I go back and forth, really. I don't <laughs> know why. But yeah. Sometimes I say caramel. If I'm being fancy, I say caramel. Yeah. Car- <laughs> caramel sounds fancier, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, rich chocolate caramel notes are now diving alongside the vanilla oak bourbon from the barrel and been smothered, uh, been smoothed out during maturation. Even at 12.9% and 75 IBUs, it is cool and drinkable, letting each sip add more and more complexity. So, it's big. Yeah. I've heard of 1050 before. Or it's, ten, yeah, ten fifty, right? It's, yeah, it's one of my favorite barrel aged stouts ever, mm-hmm. um, and even the, the regular version is fantastic. Just the ten fifty and the twelve ounce cans that comes out seasonally, but the barrel aged version, this is probably tops on my list. So yeah, barrel aged stouts. As far I've I've heard of ten fifty, I don't think I've had this barrel aged before. I do love bourbon, by the way. <laughs> we can talk about bourbon. Um, so yeah, cheers. I'm drinking out of uh, Joseph James Brewing Company. Right, that's out of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I got a stone glass here from Escondido, California. And uh, let's cheers to, I don't know, what do we cheers to? Bourbon. Oh, man, they really, that's the bourbon in there. You can mm-hmm. taste it without a doubt. And this is this is a lot higher, you said? 12, 10.2? 12.9. 12.9. I, yeah. I backed off on the 12 because I was like, surely it's not 12. <laughs> yeah, it's big. Yeah. And fantastic. It is good. I um, do, you, do you drink bourbon as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah? What do you uh, generally go for? Um, I'm a pretty big... I, I like Woodford's quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love Knob Creek. I like Angel's Envy. Ooh. 
Um, yeah. Booker's, Eagle Rare. I mean, I could go through a bunch of names. I don't know if I really have a favorite at this point. Angels Envy is kind of up there on, on the tops of my list. I agree as well. Angels Envy is probably um, my favorite go-to, especially if I'm like, introducing someone into bourbon. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely one of the ones I go for. Not not quite as harsh as some of the other bourbons. Yeah, it's a lot too. smoother, yeah. for sure. Um, I like the Wild Turkey 101. You know, it's a bigger one. Yeah. Um, I had a double oaked um, Woodford here recently that was very fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I like rye in a lot of my whiskeys and bourbons. Okay. So, you know, Angel's Navy has a rye version as well. I did not know that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like a lot of things. I mean, Larceny, for the price point, is a fantastic yeah. um, bourbon. I haven't had Larceny. I had one recently um, that one of the guys I went to high school with recently started putting out. Um, it's in liquor stores and stuff now. I mean, it's, you can go buy it. It's called uh, Boone's Boone's something. His last name is Boone, so I know it has Boone in it. Mm. Um, Boone's Bourbon, I just think is what it's called, straight up. Right. And it's like 117 proof, but it's it's really good. And it's when I had it, I had maybe one glass of it straight, and then started adding. Uh, like a like a dash of something to it, like ginger ale or coke, yeah. just because it is still 117 proof, and I was trying to drink it, kind of more in a more social setting, you know, not sitting having a glass by a fireplace or something, but yeah, I wanted to drink a few of them and really start feeling it, you right. know. Yeah, I do most of mine. I go 50 50, I guess, between neat and uh, you know a few rocks in there, but I, mm-hmm. I used to do just all bourbon and cokes or you know even Dr Pepper. Well, that's how I, that's how I started, yeah. But I don't do any sodas anymore, so it's all just either straight or, or on the rocks. Mm-hmm. I really liked uh, Jim Beam and Coke, man. Jim Beam and Coke was kind of my go-to when I first started uh, drinking, and I, that partly comes from my family. You know, my mom liked Jim Beam and Coke, and my cousin Don really liked Jim Beam and Coke. And to this day, they, my cousin Don and his husband Mike have a whole bourbon bar. But sometimes Don's just not feeling it, and he cracks a Coca Cola can and just goes straight Jim Beam and Coke because he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to mix it with like the Angels Envy or the Woodford Reserve yeah. or the Knob Creek because they're so good by right. themselves. Yeah, my original go-to was uh, Crown and Coke. Was my original mm-hmm. go-to, and then a buddy of mine when I was stationed at Shaw Air Force Base over there in Sumter. His go-to was Maker's Mark and Dr. Pepper, and he turned me on to that. And, um, Mm -hmm. man, that was fantastic. But then I stopped drinking sodas. Altogether, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I try. I don't like anything. I don't like diets. I don't like Sprites. I don't like any of that ginger Mm. ale, any of that stuff. So yeah, I just started going straight up. Yeah, I try not to drink soda, but I end up doing it sometimes. But usually it's like when I'm at work and I'm really tired, I I still... Stick to water 90% of the time of the people you ask, but every once in a while I'll fill up like half a glass of Mountain Dew, like if I'm in the morning, like right before we open. Yeah. And it, it gets me going, you know, like, okay, I'm in I'm in the moment now. I got the caffeine, yeah. like, <clears throat> I've quit pumping so through you. It. I, I can't would... even stand a sip of it. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've just, I've gone off of it for so long. It just. How do you feel about like the seltzer waters and the tonic waters and stuff like that? Is it the carbonation yeah. even too much yeah, for you? Yeah, straight waters. Or flat water is all I drink. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be a huge sweet tea drinker, and I can't even... Ugh, I can't even imagine it now. It's yeah. just too much. Yeah, I got flack from that my whole life. I've, I've never liked sweet tea. And, you yeah. know, I was raised around here. Yeah. And... It's probably one of the best things my palate's ever done for me. You know what I mean? Because I, I haven't touched the stuff. I mean, maybe my entire life I've had this much like with ice in it like throughout really? my entire life i haven't even wow. had a whole yeah, cup that's of impressive it. growing up in the south for sure yeah my pal just said mm, not a fan of that hmm. yeah i grew up on nothing but sweet tea and kool-aid and yeah soda i mean just yeah it was sugar all day i mean that's kind of what you get when you're raised around here though yeah yeah i feel like other parts of the country aren't necessarily like that you know what I mean? I feel no, like... I mean, I, I moved, you know, pro- pro- progressively west, you know, with my Air Force career and whatever. And the further I went west, the less and less sugar you got. Yeah. Because and that's like people even from the north, like, oh, tea. Like, 
they're not talking about sweet tea when they say tea. Right. And out in California, especially, I feel like, in general, you're not seeing as unfit of people or as obese people as you're going to see in the southeast. No. You know? Not at all. Like I said, I spent time in Illinois. I spent time in Alaska. I spent time in Vegas. I spent time out in California. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's a definitely a different um, clientele. Clientele. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People. Population, I guess. Yeah. Population, I guess, would be the right word. Right. <clears throat> Which is cool. I mean, I think that's better. But at the same time, some of those places have higher problems, like especially talking about like the Midwest and up in Illinois and Ohio, Michigan, that area. They have still problems of their own that we don't deal with as heavy down here. Like sure. Drugs, for one, you know, like yeah. Indiana, Illinois is big time up there. Yeah, and California even has probably not as much, but like that, especially that Illinois, Indiana, Ohio area, their meth is through the roof. Yeah, you know, for sure. Indiana, I think, had a big sting up there a mm-hmm. few years back. Yeah, um, but and that's what I tell people all the time too, just on a different subject. You know, people talk about. Uh, Hurricanes, or they talk about uh, tornadoes or whatever. People talk about they, they don't want to live here because of the hurricanes. I'm like, well, where mm-hmm. are you going to go? You're going to go over here, you're going to have tornadoes. You're yeah. going to go over here, you're going to have fires. You're going to go to Alaska, you got earthquakes. You know, yeah. you got uh, California something everywhere. earthquakes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always something going on. Torrential rainfalls and floods, you know, in, in Nevada and Arizona. Um, dry weather and heat, you know, mm-hmm. different places. There's something everywhere you go. Yeah. And kind of the extreme of that heat. At least a hurricane, Uh, you have warning. You know, you can kind of get out of the way of it. You can get two weeks out, right? I mean, they they track those things so far in advance now with all the technology the the Weather Channel has and, you know, the military as well. Uh, I think they're centered up in, like, Virginia, whatever their weather thing is. But a tornado, I mean, you know about that as it's happening. Or I know out in, like, the Middle East... Their their heat is so dry and so intense during the summers, they close they close everything from like noon to th- three p.m. or something like that. Right. You know, because it's too hot to be outside. Right. And so all the shops just close down for those yeah, we couple used to call of hours. It black flag in the uh, in, in the, military. the military. It's black flag. Yeah. yeah. And we did that at summer camp too. If if it got too hot, uh, you know, the only activities you could do was stuff inside. Or go to the pool, you know. Those yep. were, those were the only things you could do. And heat exhaustion. I had it once as a lifeguard. It's not fun. It's mm-hmm. it's very not fun. It feels like um, I didn't know this at the time because I was like 15 years old, and uh, the camp I was working with at the time had this golf cart that went around and brought water coolers to every station, and whoever was doing them that morning missed the pool, and so. We didn't have one for the lifeguards. I think there was one outside for the kids, but that one was empty after like our first like two groups. So we didn't have anything besides our initial first water bottle. And by the end of that afternoon, I was like, "All right, we're heading to dinner." Blah blah. blah whoever said it, and I was I was walking. And I was like, "Man, I feel strange," you know. Right. And I kind of like went down to one knee, almost like kind of like stumble fell into like a bench, and somebody was like what the fuck and i was like i don't know i don't know i've never had this experience before but uh, you know they took me we had a we had a registered nurse like there at all times for sleepaway camp but she's like yo yeah you're super dehydrated you've been in the sun all day and i guess you probably didn't get enough big of a breakfast and you had in-service training this morning so you swam you know for 30 minutes or whatever and then drained your body even though you're in a pool you know and you're surrounded by water of course that doesn't mean anything right yeah. i mean you pick up a little bit of that hydration through through the skin but mm-hmm. not much yeah that was a that was a scary little moment I in bet. my life yeah yeah i luckily have never had it but they they trained as well in the military to drink you know they'd have a i can't even remember what the fuck they called it now um 
rehydration cycle, I guess, or something. You know, yeah. you had to drink, depending on temperature, you had to drink a certain amount per 15 minutes mm-hmm. of whatever, yeah. you know, a pint per 15 minutes at this amount of temperature. And as it increased, you had to, I don't know, there's a whole formula mm-hmm. that they had out there. But Yeah. Well, I mean, they had science backing it, and they said, if you don't do this, you're going to become a hindrance instead of a help. Yeah. Right. And I'm sure they teach all emergency officers that same stuff for emergency. Not officers, but right, first responders. First responders, yeah. Yeah. What we got? We got a question. What's going on over here? Oh yeah, we could do that. I was I was thinking maybe go into the first responder thing a little bit, but we no, can. No, whatever you want to do, man. Yeah, I got like a whole family of first responders, so it's just oh, yeah? easy. But let's go with. Oh, this was a fun category we had a couple weeks ago. Uh, I don't know how much conversation it's going to start, but we'll just do it. So one for one, right? right. One and one, yeah. Okay. So uh, one of the categories I did was animal groupings. So you know how when you have a group of geese, it's called like a gaggle of geese, or a group of uh, crows is called a murder of crows. So I, I made a whole category of I say the animal, and you say what the group of them is called. Yeah, it has a couple of cool ones. I'll only say the cool ones. Um, I would have said a flock of crows. Yeah, that's probably seagulls. Flock of seagulls. Yeah, that's it. That's also. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I don't even know if that's right, but surely it's right. It's right. at least right in one way because yeah, <laughs> because of the band. But uh, so rhinos, group of rhinos. Hmm. I know I've heard this before, too. A group of rhinos. Uh, A group of rhinos. I don't know. I don't want to sit here in silence all day. It's a crash. A crash of rhinos. I've never gotten that. Yeah. But uh, you said something that I like hearing a lot when I'm at trivia is... Shit, I've heard this before. Like right. I've I've heard it before, and I just need to get it out of here. Yeah, that's how I, I try. Too much data in here. That's how I it's try to write the through. questions. It's like, as soon as they get the answers back, they're like, "Fuck, I knew that. I right. knew that." That way, everybody can get that. I feel like I can win. And then there's sometimes one of my favorite parts of trivia when I was like a person when I'm when I'm a person doing it instead of hosting it is. I like when they ask a question, like, okay, which actor played Norman Bates in Psycho? And I'm like, I know this. You guys focus on all the other questions. I'm going to sit here and think. You know, if that's like question two or something. And I sit there, and I think, and I think, and I think. And by question eight, I can be like Anthony Perkins. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it feels so satisfying. I thought it was Vince Vaughn. <laughs> 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 I don't, the, the 1960 version. Yeah, you know. no, I knew the answer. No. <laughs> But it's 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 very fun to have that feeling and then accomplish it. Or when you get the answer back and you did know it, yeah. you know it's it's still it's a it's a different kind of rush, but it's still yeah, it's fun. It's the same dopamine rush that you mm-hmm. get from anything else. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So let me ask you this real quick before we go into another question. Yeah. Do you play music in between the questions? Yep. Uh, my my girlfriend plays the music. She's got a Spotify playlist, and we talked about it the other day. Not me and you, means somebody else. Because uh, somebody asked her what playlist she was playing, and she's like, "Oh, it's just some playlist that I labeled like happy songs or something." And it's it's a bunch of songs typically from or from what I've been hearing. You know, I don't pay too much attention in between rounds because we're like grading quizzes and stuff. But I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. It's 70s, 80s, 90s music that just makes you feel good. You know what I mean? Uh, Elton John, Bob Dylan. I've heard uh, some stuff from the 90s, like uh, some stuff that's relatable that people can sing along to, and they like, yeah, oh, I know the song. Yeah. Right. So yeah. songs, yeah. songs that head. encourage drinking, and it might be you know some song that they could sing along to during their break. But think of. Oh, what's a good example? Like, like the song you'd want at your bar in the middle of a busy Saturday. You know what I mean? Like, even though this takes place at night, we want to have that kind of like 
fun drinking weekend vibe when it comes to music. Yeah. I got a few plays just like that, yeah. Yeah. And that's what she does, and she picks out all the songs, and I've never had a problem with it, and people seem to really enjoy it. Yeah. So good. Don't get too um, <clears throat> obscure with any of the choices. You know, kind of broad strokes make everybody happy. Yeah. But we'll ask one more, and then we'll start talking about more shit. I'll let you pick the category, all right? No, I don't need a category. Well, I, I, the way I break it all up is there's ten questions per category, you know, because it takes about an hour and a half to, to go through the whole thing. Uh, so we'll do villains. Villains was one of the categories I had last week. Hmm. Is that just villains in general, or is it comic book villains? Or it's a little bit of it's, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, okay. I had a comic book round uh, my first week where I did <clears throat> alter egos. You know, I tell you their real name, and then you tell me their superhero name or supervillain name. Hmm. But villains was a little more general. TV, movies, uh, books, all that. We will do. Another movie question. So, Anton Chigurh asked, what's the most you've ever lost on a coin toss in what 2007 film? Anton Chigurh is the character, not the actor. This was a good one. It won Picture of the Year in 2007, too, if that gives you a hint. 2007? Mm-hmm. I'd be surprised if you hadn't seen this one. I know I've probably seen it, but I, I cannot tell you for the life of me what the hell we're talking about. Mm-hmm. What's the most? What's the point to us? He was in a gas station asking the cashier. Two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. And it was picture of the year that year. Anton Chigurh was played by um, oh man yeah I was getting ready to ask you who the actor was but if you, mm. if you can't remember it right now then well, that's not who I'm thinking well, of well I know who it is too I was talking about it the other day Tommy Lee Jones is in it um, he plays a sheriff in the show Show or movie? It's a movie. It's a movie. Okay. In the movie. Um, Josh Brolin is in it. I mean, the only thing I can think of is like The Fugitive. No, no country. Way earlier. Than that. No country for old men. No country for old men. Did you see that one? Yeah. Whew, great movie. I watched it again recently because. Uh, uh, the fuck is that guy's name? The main uh, character. Yeah. With the piston thing. Uh, who was his name? The bad guy, Anton yeah. Chigurh. Yeah, it's uh, it's who I'm thinking of. I bet you if I if you if you gave me his initials, I'd know it. But it's a weird name. It is. He's he's definitely foreign. He's not from the states. I assume Bordeaux, he's got an accent. Bordeaux, 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 the fuck? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But no. Uh, <sighs> speak, yeah, speaking of that, that reminds me. Uh, my girlfriend and I have a movie. When we first met, I realized she'd not watched. Pretty much any any movie ever, you know. Like she threw her whole life into music. Well, just to interject for a second, yeah, my girlfriend that I'm with right now grew up Mormon mm-hmm. and has not seen hardly any movies. So <laughs> I'm okay. introducing her to a ton of things yeah. that I'm like, you have to watch this. You've missed out your entire life on this. Yeah, Hannah's not far off from that. I'm imagining. Right. I mean, surely not nearly if she was Mormon, but. Um, I mean, kind of what I would even assume is as the basics, she hasn't seen none of the classics like Casablanca, Gone with the Wind, mm-hmm. um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, getting a little bit later, like none of the Alfred Hitchcock stuff, right. and even some of the more modern movies that come out, like No Country for Old Men, one picture of the year. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, if I'm you're talking if, to her about Rocky and the Karate Kid and uh, mm-hmm. 
Ghostbusters and just yeah. 80s classics and things yeah. like that, but nothing. Well, Hannah hasn't seen a lot of those. We mentioned uh, even because we were both born in the 90s. I mean, Space Jam was like the biggest kid movie of the 90s, right. and she, she didn't see that. Um, kind of, kind of just blew my mind how uninterested she was even growing up. You know, I can I can see not wanting to watch Space Jam now because it's the concept's a little ridiculous, but yeah. the nostalgia is what brings you back. But without her having that initial introduction to it, well, it's a time period too because right. you know Jordan was big in that time period, but mm-hmm. now. Who the fuck is Michael Jordan? Uh, yeah. yeah, he's the guy from the fucking uh, underwear commercial, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the <like, Yeah>. hands. <laughs> um, but it's, so that was a movie we marked off our list our list recently. Uh, so I made it a trivia question because she she I test out all the questions on her first uh, since she's up there, you know, helping me. Mm-hmm. That's the only person I can tell it to without everybody accusing me that I'm cheating, you know? Because right. like one of my roommates goes to trivia. And I keep the computer as far away from him as I can. I don't think he... I mean, he'd have to get through a password to do it, but yeah. uh, you know, I don't want anyone to question my integrity when it comes to making up these questions. Sure. Especially if I live with one of the guys who's playing to win. Yeah. But, yeah. Hannah has still got plenty of movies to see. I think the next one I'm going to show her is uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Fantastic. Great movie. Yeah. I mean, you. I literally went down the list of like the top 100 on Internet Movie Database, and she'd seen like 13 of them. Yeah. You know? But, I have to do the same thing. But yeah, my girlfriend's got a whole list in her phone of stuff that she needs to see, or people have told her that she needs to see, or whatever. And yeah. Since we've been going out, I've added to that list for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to remember this dude's name from No Country for Old Men. I think it starts with an A, his first name. Antonio. That's what I've thought too, but I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, I definitely look it up. It. Give me the initials and let me see if I can uh, summon it up. Right. He also played a Bond villain in um, yep. Skyfall, I believe it was. Could be wrong on that, but definitely one of the Bond villains of Daniel Craig. Javier oh. Bardeen. So you were more right because you, you said it was a B, right? You knew it was a B. Yeah. Man, that was 2007. Oh, yeah. Woody Harrelson was in that. Because originally I was thinking Woody Harrelson, I was thinking... Um, true crime, maybe. No, not true crime. I was way off on date dates. I was thinking the uh, one that he did with Juliette Lewis back in the day. With Woody Harrelson, you mean? Yeah. Um, um, you don't know that movie either. I'm trying to think. Yeah, we're not doing very well. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> oh, um, what the hell was it? Natural Born Killers, but that was 1994. That was way back. Yeah, that's not even the same little period of movies that they were no. coming out with. Oh, but I, I, but I was thinking he walked into a gas station and probably said that somewhere. But right, but the time was way off. Yeah, Woody Harrelson does a good job of going between funny and serious in his roles. I feel like every other movie yeah, he makes is so. kind of the opposite, you know. And the TV show True Crime—I don't know if you've ever seen that. Him and uh, him and I believe it was Colin Farrell, right? No, that was the Vince Vaughn, or was it Vince Vince Vaughn, Vince Vaughn was the second season? So that was him and Colin Farrell. Okay, the first season was Woody Harrelson. And I want to say it was like a comedy person, right? Or someone who's generally more... I've only seen the first season of True Crime once. That's something I might need to watch again because that was oh, a while ago. Uh, McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yep. Vince yeah, Vaughn. the first season was way better than the second season, I thought. Yeah, you know, I didn't watch the second season because one of my buddies, John, had watched the second season. And he's like, yeah, it's not as good. And I was like, sometimes I do that with TV shows. If I hear somebody tell me it's not as good the second time, I'll keep the purity of the first one in my mind. Yeah, first one's way better. And, and, I'll, and I'll avoid it, which you know means I'm missing out somewhat. 
Yeah. But I mean, I, you're not making your own decision. You let somebody else make a decision for you. But. Yeah. And I, but I, I sometimes maybe you are making your own decision. You made your decision based on somebody else's decision, but right. Well, it's typically not just one person. There's there's a few people who have very similar tastes to me, and like I kind of trust them. Like they, like hey, you'd hate this. Right. John is one of those people uh, who definitely me and him vibe on pretty much every movie or TV show that we've watched, and if I recommend something to him. He'll go watch it. If he recommends something to me, I'll go watch it. Right. Yeah, so. my son's kind of the same way with me. If, if he likes it, I'm going to like it and vice versa. But mm-hmm. then I'm the same way. I don't know if you use the beer app on uh, Untapped. You know, that's what I use on the podcast right. to, to rate beers and stuff. But I'll go in and look at beer sometimes. And I'm at a brewery and I'm looking at something on the wall. And I'll look on Untapped and see what my friends rated it. And if they didn't rate it very well, I don't get it. Right. Not everybody. I mean, there's the same thing. There's certain people that I know that, that you rate can trust beers more. the same way that I kind of rate beers yeah. or have the same taste as me that if they didn't like it, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go with something else. But mm-hmm. so. Yeah, that's definitely good to have those people like that, even in different kind of categories of your life. You know, like there's the person you go to for TV shows, there's the person you go to when you got a big decision coming up. You know, sometimes it's your parents, sometimes it's your girlfriend, sometimes it's someone who kind of even doesn't make sense you know what i mean when you're going for a big decision i know um there's a couple people in my fraternity that i wasn't even particularly close with and i i would sometimes go to them because they weren't close to me or close to the people around me or like the situation i was in right kind of unbiased yeah right i try to deal with most situations in a fairly logical way i think Seems to work maybe 70% of the time. And <laughs> the other 30% of the time, it... 60% of the time, it works all the time, right? Is that what the quote is? That is, yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes my logical side comes across as a little emotionless to people. You know what I mean? Because I'll explain things in the way that I've been thinking them out for the past day. And they're like what the fuck you robot like quit like what do you actually think and feel and i'm like i'm expressing that to you but i've already got through the emotional part of it and i'm just right. talking to you about it you know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> all right so what so we've already talked about your college. We talked about what you're doing right now, work wise. Mm-hmm. We talked about uh, some jobs that you had in the past. So what do you, what do you like to do when you're not working? I mean, what's your your hobbies, your interests outside of work and relationships and whatever? Right. Uh, so some of my favorite things to do are uh, meet new people. You know, I went to homegrown when I didn't have anybody to hang out with and. Met a couple people at the bar, and then we went to another bar after that. Like, I definitely am a social being, so I I like meeting new people, probably more so than than most people. And I can go do those things alone, and then become kind of either morph into a crowd or get a couple people maybe magnetizing towards me. And I I get a not like thrill out of it, but I I mean I. Right, the chemicals are released in the brain. Sure. So I like doing that. Uh, I definitely like exploring different types of alcohol, which we've cleverly disguised as a hobby, right? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a hobby. It's right. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> it's one of the best things that's ever happened to the world. Uh, I play a good amount of board games as well. That was... Uh, hobby that came on pretty recently uh, just because I like thinking strategically and it's a lot better than doing like a video game you know because you're playing with other people in the same room in either a competitive or cooperative way and my friend Chris has a lot a shit ton of board games I mean you know I haven't even played them all I don't even think he's played them all but if you want to take a couple up couple hours of your day and 
you know, you're already off work or you don't ha- didn't have work that day and you want to drink beers and you want to do something besides sit down and watch Netflix and drink and you want it to be a little more interactive, um, you know, you, you play one of these complicated board games. I'm not talking about fucking Monopoly or Risk or anything like that. I mean, full-fledged out, people spent, like, many, many hours creating detailed art around them and, like, the pieces, the board, and came up with this sometimes complicated rule set. Sometimes some of the more fun ones don't have very hard rules. It's just a concept that you've never thought of before, and now you can implement it. So I definitely like that, and there's a couple just off the top of the head if you you or anybody watching wanted to get into something a little bit more uh engaging than scrabble or monopoly right uh betrayal of the house on the hill is a horror based hard game or not hard game but uh board game that is the best way to describe it is kind of a mixture of clue and maybe like a some sort of uh, event based game basically you you create the haunted house that your character is becoming a part of okay. and at a certain point the haunt is what it's called starts so you're building the house for the first half of the game opening up rooms drawing cards and random stuff's happening you know maybe a ghost comes out and you have to roll to see if it fucking trips you or whatever but then the the beef of the game is the second act, which is the haunt. And there's this book. There's two books, actually. One is for a traitor. Someone in the group becomes the bad guy halfway through the game. And then everybody else are the people trying to survive. And you go into separate rooms, read your books. You each have your own objectives of how you win. Uh, usually the traitor has some sort of higher powers than you because it's one versus three or four people, you know, so it has to be fair. And then the game turns from cooperative to competitive halfway through. And there's this, you know, bunch of flavor text is what it's called, like the story behind what's happening and why it's happening. And then you come back in and now you have an enemy halfway through the game. Hmm. And it's different every time because the house is built randomly through like this huge stack of just individual tiles that are different rooms on each tile. Uh, that's a great one to start if anybody's interested in getting into board games. Uh, but the the rabbit hole goes very deep on on all the crazy stuff that people are coming up with nowadays. Right. Hmm. I haven't um, played a lot of board games lately. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I grew up playing, you know, Parcheesi, like you said, uh, mm-hmm. Monopoly and right. Risk and um, what, Shoots and Ladders. I don't know. The, mm-hmm. All the classic Mattel board games that came out. Right. Uh, but, yeah, they've gotten so much more. And Clue, you know, I played that quite a bit. Yeah. Well, and that's that's one of the things that I think, especially my generation has kind of been liking about these more complicated board games is with how fast the world has grown up you know it feels good to take it back a couple steps you know what i mean and like shit playing board games like i didn't think i was going to be doing that very much once my like when i started college i'm like fuck maybe i'll play one board game every two years you know and then maybe my third or fourth year of college because i was there for five uh we started we you know we started doing board games because we were all tired of fucking you know if we weren't drinking we were sleeping or going to class like what do we do with that with the, with that empty space to have some fun like right. shit man we can't online gaming right by yourself right not socializing with other people at the conference yeah and so it's it's definitely a way to kind of take a step away from this stuff and that stuff and technology and have some good times with your friends that aren't reliant on something that has a fucking plug that needs a plug, you know, right? to work. Or social lubricant, you know what I mean? Like, 
Right. It's hard to find pure activities anymore, like truly pure. You know, what is there? Sports? And, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know yeah. how many pure things there are left. No, that's a good point. Yeah. And, do, I mean, do you know of no, any off the top of your head? Like, I don't know. <laughs> but I think um, I think maybe on that point we should wrap it up. Really, we're two hours in. Oh, yeah. And I think that's a good point to wrap it up in is, you know, get off of this. Get off of that. Right. Like, let's go media. Let's go talk in the living room. and Yeah. Let's sit down and have conversations with people and, um, and play board games. Maybe not board games, but at least... Let's get out and be social. Let's and, engage and together yeah. and, and be a society and, and be with each other instead mm-hmm. of all this electronic equipment, which I don't know if it's, you know, I think we get a little while longer. To, we can do that. I think eventually we're going to be integrated with mm-hmm. AIs and things like that. I mean, we're going to be integrated with this yeah. stuff. It's the, going to be part of us and part yeah. of the society. The filter won't be able to be taken off at a certain point. Right. So, so enjoy it while you can. Because um, it's coming to a time where, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be integrated with the technology. Right, sure. you're going to be like, hey, let me look that up. Yeah. <laughs> Just click it on your head. Exactly. You ever watch the show? I know we're trying to wrap it up, but you ever watch the show Black Mirror? Whew, I love that Black Mirror. Show is amazing, it's right? amazing. It's Twilight Zone with technology, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, Twilight it's Zone, Outer Limits, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a big throwback to the stuff that I grew up with, man. And it's. It is forward thinking as fuck. Yeah, that show has had me like literally when the episode ended, like turn off the TV, walk outside, smoke a cigarette, and be like, Yeah. Like, I don't need to fucking look at a screen for a while. Right. Like, <laughs> that show is intense, man. Yeah. I can't wait for the next season. But There's a, who I don't know if you knew this. I might just be about to make your day. There's an episode coming out in like eight days. It's another Christmas special. Okay. Like, and it's just not a whole season, but it's like eight or nine just days from now, a single episode, like White Christmas, the one with the guy from Mad Men in it. Yeah. Um, I'm ready. Yeah. Eight days. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Don't forget about that. Oh, man. I'm so pumped. Eight days. Black Mirror. All right, man. Well, anything else you want to plug or anything? Or I mean, We've already talked about the... Uh, hmm. Wise, wise guys, guys trivia. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kept wanting to say mad guys for some reason. Yeah. Wise guys trivia um, that you're hosting. Um, Groucho's Deli is letting you use their space to, to do that in. Right. Um, we've talked about homegrown. We've talked about music. We've talked about, um, I don't know. Beer. Things. Beer. Life. Religion. Yeah. But the biggest thing you want to promote is the, the wise guy trivia for sure. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a Thursday doubt. Thursday nights, seven-ish to... Yeah, I, I say seven, knowing that people will get there at seven and then have to sit down and order a beer. Right. So we generally get started around seven fifteen. But two dollar beers, ten dollar buckets. You got some food. Um, pri- down pri- the street. Prizes after every round. Prizes. Yeah. Yeah. Grand prize at the end, obviously. What are the prizes? Did we discuss that? So yeah, we have not. But the rounds one, two, three, and four. The winner of that round, not cumulative points, will win. A Groucho's gift card. And then at the end, uh, we usually have at least a $25 Groucho's gift card and then something else that either I bring or Emery, the owner, brings just to, to spice it up a little bit. You know, if you want to... I think this upcoming week we have uh, a bunch of different, like, um, like deals that are from those catalogs that you pay like $100 for and they have... A bunch of fucking coupons in them. You know what I mean? Right. It'll be like one of those. Yeah. Uh, so it'll... I looked through it briefly today, but, uh, you know, we spent some money on it, and it had pretty much buy one, get one, anything at any place around town. Mm-hmm. And it, it has local stuff in there, too. It's a Charleston buyer's guide or something. Yeah, I used to buy a lot of those out in, uh, in Vegas, as a matter of fact, and it had some great deals in it. I mm-hmm. mean, some of them are stuff that you wouldn't have bought otherwise, just like coupons in general, but... Mm-hmm. But like but it, was, it was good fun stuff at restaurants and like I, a couple of the stuff in there was like free stingrays tickets games and uh, you know Charleston battery games and stuff like that. So you got some sports venues that are embedded in it too, or some sports tickets that are in the coupon book itself. So yeah, it's a pretty good grand prize. I think we're gonna come up with more creative shit in the future. But yeah. with, for week three, we're still. Figuring it all out, you know. Yeah, it's going to evolve. 
Yeah. Well, good, man. Well, Justin, I appreciate you coming in, and um, we'll see you Thursday night, I guess. Thursday night? Right. Yeah. Yeah. you got to play the outro music now. It's well, I'm not going to play it. i got to plug it into it. But oh, I'm just okay. going to say talk to you soon is all I'm going to say. <laughs> talk to right you soon. <laughs> all right. Later, guys. <laughs>